Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So not in my last shop update video, but the one before that I mentioned that I had this little Dunlap lathe that if my son didn't want, I would uh, be willing to give away, provided somebody is willing uh, to pay you know, the postage for it. And I did have a few inquiries for that. And I tell you what, it was tough because uh, the ones that inquired uh, about the lathe, they uh, are regular viewers of mine. Um, they email me quite a bit. They uh, post uh, uh, messages on, on my videos and that sort of stuff. So it was really kind of tough for me to try to figure out who to give it to. But um, I did decide, and after I realized why they wanted it, really kind of made the decision pretty easy. So if you don't know Walt from uh, Southern Engineering, um, you should check out his channel. He's got some, he's got some pretty neat stuff going on there. But now Walt is an electrical engineer who um, also teaches STEM classes. Uh, I think for junior high kids, you know, younger, younger uh, kids, and. Um, and he won, he wanted to lay so that his uh, uh, so that his students I think can learn the principles of operation of a, of a lathe and and maybe get some hands-on experience. Um, uh, I did make him aware that uh, there are some what I call issues with this lathe that I wanted to make very clear and upfront for him to make his final decision whether if he wanted it or not. And um, so I thought I'll make a video of that and, and I was just going to make a private video, but you know what? Uh, in case Walt changes his mind or something, um, you know, maybe somebody else wants it. I don't know. Uh, Walt, if you want it, uh, given all the information that I'm going to give you today, um, it's fine. I will ship it out to you. So let me uh, bring the camera in and uh, let's talk about uh, uh, what this lathe is. And I think my batteries are getting low on my wireless mic, so if it cuts out, if I discover it cuts out, I'll just go back and, and annotate uh, uh, with a microphone or something. So let me bring the camera in and uh, let's talk about this uh, little uh, 40s uh, model Dunlap lathe sold by uh, Craftsman. So, catch you in just a second. Okay, so hopefully I have this in frame so that you can see it. Let me adjust it here just a little bit. Okay, so this is a, I think a 46 model uh, or 44, somewhere in the, somewhere in the mid 40s. Uh, Dunlap lathe. Dunlap is a manufacturer. Manufactured it for um, for Craftsman. Now this is a manual change gear lathe. It's uh, got a seven inch, six or seven inch swing, uh, and about twelve inches between centers. Okay, so that's uh, that's what the lathe is. Now when I got the lathe, <clears throat> the only thing it had with it when I got it was just this four jaw chuck. Now there's no key to this chuck, but this uh, key's got, uh, this chuck has hex keys. So uh, opening and closing the chuck should be no problem. One of the things that uh, I wanna talk about here, just, just because uh, I want you to aware of it, the uh, compound screw and the cross slide screw, uh, these are an oddball pitch, right? These are uh, 28 pitch uh, screws. So if you take one divided by 28, you see what one turn gives you. And if you were to make a dial or something, you'd see it'd be uh, off the wall. But now having said that, if you did want to make dials, you could make it to the nearest whole thousandths and then just measure and then go from there because you're only talking tenths of a thousand being off from a single movement. So that's really not a handicap. It's just an inconvenience because you don't know uh, there are no graduated dials on, on either the compound or the cross feed to let you know how far you're moving. So the other option is you know you can put an indicator uh, on the casting as you dial it in to see how much you're taking uh, off. Okay, the uh, lead screw uh, it does have a uh, does have a, uh, a thread dial indicator. Okay, uh, the lead screw I think is a uh, 10 TPI half inch lead screw. Uh, the half nuts, uh, uh, something that I want to talk about, and I'll get a closer look here in just a minute. So anyway, like I said, when I bought it, uh, it had the uh, only gears it had on it was uh, what was on the banjo and uh, had this chuck. So one of the first things that I noticed was that, uh, you see here, this is the dead center that actually came with it. You know, and I was under the impression or un to understand that the lathe was a zero morse taper right but that 
is not a standard zero Morse taper. This is a standard zero Morse taper. So you see there's quite a bit of difference there, right? Uh, so once I discovered that the headstock and the tailstock spindles didn't have a standardized taper in them, I, uh, I uh, got online and found a guy that sold replacement parts for these. Uh, by the way, this is a 109-21270. That's the uh, model of this lathe. Um, I found a guy online that sold replacement parts. So I bought a new tailstock quill and a new headstock spindle, okay, with the proper taper. But now I did, uh, I did keep I did keep the old one, so here's the old uh, headstock spindle, right? Got the got the key tape to it. So there's there's the old uh, headstock spindle. Um, in case you know, yeah, I'm kind of like Mr. Pete in that respect. I don't really want to throw any of the original parts away because, well, I just don't. And then uh, here I have the uh, original tailstock quill. Okay, so. And like I said, the uh, the taper that's in it is not a standard uh, zero Morse Morse taper. It's uh, kind of close, but it's an oddball. So that's uh, that's why I changed those out. So I'll I'll be sending those along with you in case you want them. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about accessories um, next. The you notice that I, I do have a quick change uh, tool post. I do have the lantern tool post and uh, this did come with it but I have no tool holders for this little tool post but uh, it's all clamped, the wedge is there, the rock, you know, the rocker, everything is there uh, in case you want to try to find some small uh, tool holders. I just wouldn't know where to get them. Okay. So do you have that? Um, hang on. I'm sorry about that. I should have muted my phone. Um, still didn't. Uh, so anyway, I don't have a motor with it, but any fractional um, uh, motor will be fine. Quarter horse, third horse, something like that. But I will. I do have a uh, step pulley here that I'll send along. That's what I used to drive it with. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so accessories that I bought for you notice here. I got a quick change tool post. I did buy, uh, I did buy that, and I do have four holders for it. Okay, so that'll go along with it. Uh, also got a selection of, you know, quarter inch. Uh, this is braised carbide uh, bits. So there's a little selection there, and you know you can resharpen those if you got a green wheel. But I'll send those along. Uh, I have a face plate. Okay, I do have one small dog that uh, it's a little tight, but I think it would drive it. So, uh, but you can have the little dog because it's too small to use on my Atlas. Uh, so there's a face plate. Um, I have a uh, chuck. Uh, I think it's a half inch, uh, uh, you know, sixteenth to a half inch. Uh, uh, this is a Craftsman truck. It's got uh, half inch uh, 20 threads. It will thread right onto the uh, tailstock uh, quill. So I'll send that along. Um, additionally, I uh, have a, a, a small, this is really small, but um, let me get it out of here. I do have a small three jaw chuck with a safety key and that uh, that fits this lathe. It threads on, so that will go along with it. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, I do have two dead centers. In case you have the desire, or the need to turn uh, between centers. So, and finally, I did find, although it took a while, the change gears. So I do have the change gears here, plus. You know, there's change gears on the banjo, the threading charts on the inside. Okay, so now let me uh, talk about another thing about this lathe. When I got this lathe, I noticed that the half nuts uh, would uh, pop out. So there's a casting, okay, 
and you'll see here that one of the half nuts broke off okay and so this uh, casting is pretty much useless I saved it because well you know how it is it's got the cat it's got the uh, casting number on it and and I had something uh, to go off when I found another one so I did find another casting and it's in there but um, it doesn't want to uh, well for two reasons um, there is a slight alignment problem between the half nuts here where it would grip onto the screw and the screw so it's it's slightly out of alignment and when you lock the half nuts in you'll see this uh, the the screw moves slightly and I think the simple fix for that is to put uh, un, un take the uh, half nuts off and right and then uh, put a dial indicator you know maybe move it to the middle uh, put a dial indicator on the screw clamp it down and see how much that screw moves and then I would pull the half nuts out and then I would either shim or mill down this little section here so that that actually fit proper now the other thing uh, that I need to mention and I don't know if you can see it let me well maybe not let's uh move this out of the way you see there's a little hole right here now that should be a threaded hole to hold a detent spring and ball now I do have the detent spring and ball for it I bought it okay but uh, I think this is going to have to either be um, plugged and something locked tied it in and then redrilled because this is this hole has been drilled out for whatever reason and if you look on the half nuts you'll see there's a hole there for the ball to uh, you know push into and detent and hold it in position when uh, it's uh, the nuts are engaged or disengaged and finally I have an, a, a spare uh, thrust washer for the for the spindle so that's uh, all the parts that I have for it and um, so again I want to reiterate that uh, it does have back gears the back gears are uh, sort of a planetary gear system sort of uh, th that are in a drum they're locked here you have to the, the locking is on the back and and uh, uh, so you know it, it will it, it will um, go into back gears so the, uh, the the here's what I think the drawbacks are uh, for somebody who has never used a lathe and that's trying to learn you have no real indication of how far you're moving because you don't have any graduated dials okay for both the compound and the crossfeed that can be compensated with with a dial indicator needs a little work on the uh, on the half nut here so that uh, it will engage properly and the detent fixed okay now the other thing is you notice that there is no means to traverse the saddle along the uh, bedways okay and to accomplish that there is and see if I can get it in frame here there's a little handle over here on the end that you can manually turn the lead screw to advance the saddle now the drawback to that is I think <clears throat> if we look in the gearbox here so you know right now the um, gearbox is you know it's it's geared down for a slow feed which is what you would want right now it's disengaged right um, but if we're gearing down going this way then you're gearing up to go this way right which means that when you turn the handle it's going to be harder to turn because you're gearing up up the drivetrain even though these are idle you know so that uh, for small hands um, uh, you know with not a lot of hand strength that might be a problem so uh, or maybe not you know I, I don't know it's it's really up to you so anyway like I said it's it is uh, free uh, to a good home and Walt if you uh, if you still decided that you want it um, it's yours buddy now also just so that you know I uh, have collected documentation on this lathe and I've bound it so um, this updates an improvement for the 109 series lathe okay these are uh, reprints that I have um, also have the uh, operating instructions um, there's another copy of the operating instructions there's some loose stuff in here too 
Um, operating instructions and part lists, you know, for similar may also apply to the. And then there's uh, there's some drawings and there's a bunch of there's a bunch of stuff in here, you know, tool grinding and and stuff, you know, that uh, would would be helpful. So I will uh, I'll send that uh, along to. Now I'm going to guess all this in a in a box. I need to. I don't have a UPS or anything like that close to me, so I'll have to uh, I'll have to box it up and drive it to Dixon or so. It's about 25 miles from me, and and ship it. But I'll I'll. Uh, my question is, do you want it shipped in? You want me to crate it? You want me to build a little crate for it, or you just want me um, maybe uh, double double box it and uh, and corrugated um, plywood? I mean uh, cardboard. So you let me know, buddy. Uh, again, um, I just like I said, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not like I'm taking money for it other than just recouping my shipping costs or anything. But I just have always felt my whole life that it's very very important to give as much information about something that you're letting go of um, to the next person so that they can make an uh, make a, an educated uh, decision about whether if they want to invest time or money or or whatever and whatever it is that you're getting rid of. I just think that is the, uh, um, I think that's the uh, noble thing to do. I think uh, I think God frowns on on uh, on us when we treat each other poorly. So, all right. So look, I want to end it here for the rest of you guys that uh, you know uh, watch my channel. I know this is a uh, maybe it's just interesting to see. I don't know. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to watch uh, my videos and um, subscribing. Uh, if, if you find the videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. You know, I've, I've, uh, I know I've been spending a lot of time uh, actually working on the shop rather than working in the shop, but I'm hoping that a change. I have decided that I'm, I probably, as my um, home projects, uh, my remodeling projects and stuff. Uh, I won't concentrate on those a whole lot, but I'll definitely give some updates because there's going to be some interesting things happening there. So um, for those of you who follow my CNC for the home hobbyists, uh, I am uh, I am working on the next one. I just, uh, like I said, it's just, it's fine in time. So thanks again for watching. Thanks again for being patient with me. And, uh, and just thanks uh, for everything you guys do. You folks are wonderful just absolute wonderful folks and and i am blessed uh to have you guys in my life guys and gals in my life so other than that have a blessed day